All right, guys, we don't need to spend a lot of time uh, going over what we're doing here because I think we all know why we're here. We're here to do a mock draft. Um, the only thing I want to bring up, a couple things. Number one, keep the comments coming. Um, the, the more hateful, the better. No, I'm kidding. I, I just, But really, it, it, I am learning a lot. I think most of you guys are just angry homers, and that's fine. You do what you do. But I have actually learned a couple things. There are some people that I didn't uh, say some super com nice things about that ended up being true. And, uh, again, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm learning a ton of stuff, and it's going to help us to keep getting better and better with these mock drafts. Um, sometimes we're going to disagree. Sometimes we're not. It is what it is. If you don't like it, start your own stupid channel and see how that goes. Um, the only other thing I want you to consider is please check out the memberships. You can check that down below. There's a little join button. We've got three different tiers, some cool stuff. You get some loyalty badges and some custom emojis. You're also going to get, and I think this is the coolest thing because I schedule all these things out, sometimes like a week in advance. You're going to get the opportunity to watch the videos whenever you want. As soon as it goes live, you're going to be able to watch it. You're not going to have to wait a week to watch that uh, that stream. So just something to consider. Check it out. Uh, otherwise, let's just let's get started, man. Let's get started. So one thing that I forgot to say in the intro, uh, I get a million comments that this is not the correct draft order. It takes me a week to do this, all right? It takes me a week. There is no draft order, first of all. It's nothing set in stone. This is as the draft order is, according to tankathon.com, at the time that I do this. Today is December 19th. I did this last Monday, so that's where the draft order comes from. But with the first overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. Again, it's the same old thing. The, the only thing that I can add to this is that it's it's certainly not set in stone for two reasons. Number one, um, we don't know who the first overall pick is going to go to. We assume it's the Jets, but we don't know. They might mess up and win a game here or there or something. Probably not against the Rams, but you never know. Secondly, we don't know 100% that they're going to pick Trevor Lawrence. It seems fairly set in stone, but Justin Fields is a great quarterback, and it might just come down to preference, right? I don't know who the head coach GM is going to be when this when the time comes. Um, I don't know if that's all set in stone or what, but um, they, they may just have a particular st – I mean, th there's the meetings, right? You might just sit down and be like, dude, that Trevor guy's kind of a douche. I don't really like him. So we're going to go with Justin Fields. Who knows? So I'm just throwing that out there to try to make this pick interesting, but it's the same old thing as Trevor Lawrence. With the second overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft – the Jacksonville Jaguars select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Not getting any hate on this. I don't think I ever would get any hate on this. Some people talk about teams wanting to trade up and whatnot. Why don't we trade up and do – dude, the reason you can't trade up is because these teams don't want to trade back. The Jets want to make a pick. The Jaguars want to make a pick. The Bengals in the next – pick are going to want to make a pick nobody's going to want to trade up I really doubt these teams are going to want to trade back it is what it is Justin Fields to the Jaguars with the third overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Cincinnati Bengals select Penny Sewell offensive tackle Oregon um you know, again, I'm, I'm kind of fishing for comments just because I, I keep getting the same, like the same fan bases keep commenting because some of these are a little bit more iffy, right? The needs are a little more, more iffy. The, the ranks are a little bit more iffy. If you're a Jets, Jaguars, Bengals fan or just a draft fan, t tell me what you think about Penny Sewell. Just give me something. Give me something to work with, some comments, something to, to think about because I need something here. But as it stands, Penny Sewell is seen by many, and this may change over time, as a generational talent at tackle, which is why this makes it real easy. But I have seen some people say that's a little bit overblown. Let me know what you think about Penny Sewell. But as far as the pick itself, I think this one's fairly locked in. Penny Sewell to the Bengals at three. With the fourth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the LA Chargers will accept a trade from the Denver Broncos in exchange for the 13th overall pick, as well as the 2022 first and fourth round pick. And with the fourth overall pick, the Denver Broncos select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. A couple things, and I know some of you guys are not fans of Zach Wilson because he's like the quarterback you have. We'll get to that. First of all, I stopped using the trade charts because you guys hated that so much. I, I did use it a little bit if I didn't have much to go on, but I want to go back and find trades so that I can say, yes, this does happen in the NFL. In 2003, the New York Jets moved up from 13 to 4. They gave up a sec uh, first and fourth in addition to pick 13. So that's where that comes from. That is the only comp. That's the only time in NFL history somebody's moved from 13 to 4, at least since 2000. And that was the compensation, so that's what we're doing. It's a first and a fourth as well as 13th overall. Now, in terms of Zach Wilson, <clears throat> several people are saying that he's just like Drew Locke. Um, 
elaborate for me because I'm 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 not arguing with you. I just don't know in what way you mean that. It's got to be stylistically, but I'm looking at their build. They're completely built very differently. Zach Wilson is not as big as he is, but I also looked at some of the the additional stats. Uh, I know Griffin Trey Fault. Sorry for messing up your thing, but you said Wilson is too similar to Locke. Totally understand. Please elaborate. But uh, as a comparison, Locke currently via PFF had an 88 overall grade. Wilson has a 94.8. Um, completion percentage, Locke 62.8, Wilson 72.3. Touchdown to interception, Locke 28 and 8, Wilson 29 and 3. Uh, passing yards per attempt, Locke 8, Wilson 10.8. Uh, grades under pressure, uh, Locke has a 56 overall grade, real bad. Wilson 75.8. He's still grading out as a good quarterback even under pressure. And then if you look at the statistics, one touchdown, three interceptions for Locke, five touchdowns, one interception for Wilson vastly different in just about every metric Wilson is better um, so the the only thing I can think is let's say he is Drew Locke but he's the upgraded better version of what they hoped Drew Locke would be or he's just not Drew Locke one of those two things is true but saying that he is Drew Locke is a little bit iffy um, but again please elaborate and I'll, I'll consider it further but Zach Wilson to the Broncos at four with the fifth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Trey Lance, quarterback, NDSU. Now, listen, I've already stated I'm not a fan of this. I like Dak. I think he he is the guy that you're always looking for, right? Why are you getting rid of Dak if you have um, – or why are you trying to get a Dak when you already have a Dak, I guess, right? It, it, you don't get cheap on quarterback. Now, with that said, I want to explore it. First of all, I want to know what you think in the comments. And I know Cowboys fans will definitely let me know. Biggest fan base on my channel by far. So please let me know what you think about it. I know some of you are actually in favor of it. Um, also, very curious, what's going to happen if this... Because it's not just a matter of what's the smart thing, right? I disagree with it. A lot of you guys disagree with it. That doesn't mean it's not about to happen. So I'm real curious how you guys are going to react. By the way, a little thing I'm planning on doing on draft day that I think would be cool is bringing up Zoom channels. And I want to get like 32 of them with a bunch of fan bases. So I want to get like live reactions of fans. I think that'd be a lot of a lot of fun. But just a preview, what are you guys going to do if and when Trey Lance? And, and for all I know, you guys actually really like the idea. I do think it's weird they haven't paid Dak. There, there seems to be a big discrepancy there. So I do think this is a possibility. And I just want to explore it. What do you think of the op the odds of it happening? How are you going to react if and when that happens? But let's just play with it. We'll give it one week, and then we'll we'll go back to not doing this anymore. But Trey Lance to the Cowboys at five. With the sixth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. So. If Cowboys fans weren't mad about Trey Lance, I'm sure Panthers fans were because everything in my comment section says, I don't care who it is, just give me a new quarterback. Um, now, I did just do last night an interview with the Big Cat. Um, I'm sure if you're a Panthers fan, you know who he is. Real good dude. Uh, happy to be able to talk with him. He was saying he thinks it's a realistic possibility they hang on to Teddy for a year and then trade back. Not that that's what he thinks the fan base wants or even what he wants, but he thinks that might be what they do. Um, I obviously didn't do that here. The mock was already done at this point, but that is something to consider is if the quarterbacks are gone, trade back and get a tackle or, or you know, uh, some kind of an offensive lineman to, to try to further help Teddy out a little bit. Um, but I, as I'm sitting here, and it depends what your board is. I know a lot of people think Sertan isn't that good. A lot of you guys really like Farley and think he should be higher. What I use is a consensus board. I aggregate all the boards around the web, and that's what this is. That's what I use. Right now, Sertan is a potential top five pick. Farley is not in the top 10 right now, but he is climbing very rapidly. He'll probably be there sooner than later. But as it stands right now, we need help at corner. This is a top five player at cornerback. That's what we're going to do. Patrick Sertan to the Panthers at six. With the seventh overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. I was real willing to do something different. I know some people in the comments have said quarterback. I was all for it. I, I was ready and willing to move up, but I think the Chargers were a little bit more willing to move back a little bit further and get that additional compensation from the Broncos. I just couldn't find a good enough partner that made enough sense. Um, 
also considering trading back, but what's the point, right? We need an edge rusher. One of the few in the draft class is sitting right here. We're, we're, it's really just me wanting to do stuff for the sake of doing something different. But this is, I think, the right pick right here and now. Uh, would love some additional comments in this scenario. If the quarterbacks are gone, Gregory Russo is sitting here staring you in the face. Are you doing something else? Are you picking somebody else? Are you trading back? Or wh What are you doing? Or is this just what it is and it's just kind of one of those, this is probably going to be the pick kind of situations. Let me know in the comments. With the eighth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins via the Houston Texans select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. This is the second week in a row now that Jamar has fallen to us. I just, I feel like if this is the case, that's what I'm going to do. I do understand the argument that, um, you know, we don't need to do it because these guys fall, but at some point you got to take them, right? At some point, because otherwise they're just going to go into what, the second, third, fourth round. Like at some point you have to pull the trigger and Jamar Chase is number four on my board top five player position of need sitting there at number eight i just i don't see a scenario where you say yeah we, but we can get a guy in the third round yeah but who you're not getting jamar chase in the third round so again willing to uh, listen to some other options in the comment section but this is kind of a no-brainer if jamar chase makes it to the dolphins at eight so we're going to pull the trigger on that one with the ninth overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft to philadelphia eagles select micah parsons linebacker Penn State. Um, I'm making quite a few enemies with Eagles fans right now. I know they all absolutely hated my my uh, my mock draft, but um, it's kind of good. I feel like if I'd be doing something wrong if I didn't have Eagles fans mad at me. It's, it's sort of uh, expected, I think, with Eagles fans. But um, again, as always, leave the comments. Let me know what you think. As I see it, the board right now is linebacker and wide receivers, and that's not a bad position to be in because we need both. But Micah Parsons is higher up on the board, so I'm going to go with Micah Parsons. But again, leave me those comments in this situation. Again, I'm trying to get you to think. Not Don't just tell me random stuff, right? In my situation, you're looking at a board that is top five talent in Micah Parsons, top five-ish. Um, then you got maybe like one or two top ten wide receivers, and then you got some stuff behind that, maybe a corner or whatever. But... What are you doing in that situation? Are you really going to reach? Are you going to take the best available player who's Micah Parsons? What are you going to do as an Eagles fan? And again, I want you to think from my perspective because I'm trying to do this properly and not just pick the best available position even though there's not, you know, I could have taken a, an offensive tackle for the Chargers at four who isn't even a top 20 player, but I'm not going to do that because that's stupid and that's irresponsible and I'm just trying to get Chargers fans, all four of them, to like me and I'm not going to do that. As much as I want this channel to grow and everything, I also want to do things that make sense and are reasonable and what a GM would do. So I want you to think from my position, what are you going to do, Eagles fans? I think it's a good pick. Let me know. With the 10th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. I've, I've mentioned a couple times that I am somewhat of a Daniel Jones believer. Um, I know he fumbles a lot, and I know the team is not where it needs to be, especially offensively, but um, I think he I think he could be a good quarterback. But you know what? Let's What I want to do, what we need to do is put this thing to bed. And what I mean by that is we're going to – take away all the excuses right Saquon's coming back I'm gonna stack you with wide receivers I'm gonna get you the best offensive line of football which we've already been building toward and I respect the Giants for doing that trying to stack up the offensive line we're taking away all excuses this thing is either gonna work behind you and and this offense or it's not and if you can't make this work with all that I'm gonna invest into you in this offense then maybe it's time for us to move on but 2021 is the year we find out if this is for real by the way giant seven round mock drop in tomorrow assuming it's uploaded i don't know I, I haven't even started recording it yet um you can get that early access so consider joining you can check out the seven round giants mock draft today if it's there if it's available so consider it otherwise Devonte smith to the giants with the 11th overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the detroit lions select quitty pay edge rusher michigan um I consider trading back in this spot, uh, but there aren't a lot. As I said before, there's not a lot of defensive players available. So Quiddy Pay has been flying up the boards, and I really want to get a little bit more help up front, especially. Trading back isn't really going to help us all that much. I mean, it gives us more picks, but we're in a position now where we can grab a solid defensive player, one of the better defensive players in this class. I, I think somebody even commented that they would take Quiddy Pay over Rousseau. 
I don't think that that's as big of a stretch as it would be in previous years with guys like Chase Young or whatever. I don't think there's that big of a difference. Um, I mean, there might be when we get into the NFL and actually find out, but that's not as outlandish of a, of a thing to say. So you, what I'm saying is you may be potentially getting the, the best defensive line player, edge rusher in this class. You just can't pass it up. So I'm not going to trade back. We're going to take a swing right here, right now, get Quiddy Pay to help out this defense. With the 12th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Caleb Fairley, cornerback, Virginia State. I'm um, feeling good about the pick for a couple reasons. Number one, 49ers fans were mad at me because I didn't get you guys a DB. Um, I, again, there, there will be a 49ers seven-round mock. This will be in two days, so Wednesday, I guess. Um, so I got you your cornerback. So hopefully 49ers fans are happy. Also, a lot of Caleb Farley fans are mad that he was so late in my drafts. Probably still mad because they think he should be a top 10 guy. Um, again, he's slowly moving up the board. So hopefully I rectify that situation as well, at least a little bit. Um, again, it just, it just feels like a good pick. Uh, one of the things I realized when I did my seven round with the 49ers is it's not just the corners. There are so many guys that are leaving. So many guys. So... I mean, that, that seven-round mock, is it's it's great because we get to replenish, but it's also like, geez, this sucks because we're just trying to stay afloat right now. But we got to start somewhere, and, and as you guys have pointed out, it's not just that a lot of guys are free agents because a lot of teams, you get free agents, but they're 26-year-old studs. Of course, they're going to get paid. These guys are all in the 30s, so a lot of them, they're gone. So we, we just don't have cornerbacks to even field, so we not only need to get better in terms of talent, we just need bodies. So Caleb Fairley to the 49ers. And by the way, and I'm sure this is going to be in the comments, I have no idea why I keep calling him Fairly. I don't. I, it must have. I think when I first saw him, I thought it was F A R E L Y. Uh, it's not. It's F A R L E Y. Farley. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to keep doing it, and it's just one of those things. And feel free to jump in the comments and tell me I'm an idiot. That's fine. It just. It's going to happen. With the 13th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the L A Chargers select Sean Wade, cornerback, Ohio State. This one was tricky. Um, the number one thing everybody wants for the Chargers is offensive line, and I completely get that. I, I, I had somebody in the comments mention that DB is also something that, that you guys need. I don't think it's as big of a need, but I wanted to be open to it. And the fact of the matter is Sean Wade is one spot higher than Samuel Cosme. If it's me, I'm taking the tackle, but I wanted to be open-minded enough, and I'm going to take the better of the two positions, and I'm going to take Sean Wade. Again, if there are any Chargers fans out there that happen to be on YouTube, um, let me know what you think in the uh, what you think in the picks. What you, what, what you think of the pick in the comments, and uh, we'll go from there. But Sean Wade to the Chargers at 13. With the 6-14th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, Minnesota Vikings will accept a trade from the New England Patriots coming from 16 up to 14. Uh, with the 14th overall pick, the New England Patriots select Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. So kind of a weird and unusual trade because it's only two spots. But here, here's here's the thought process. And, and when I do a trade, it's always what does the team picking want to do? It, it, I don't care who wants to come up. Um, I'm looking at the Vikings, and the guys that are right in front of me are not a great value. But the problem is there are guys that we like, and there's not a lot of them. So I'd like to get a little bit of better value, but I don't want to lose out on the guys. So I'm willing to move back a little bit. So the question is, is there anybody that's close that wants to give up a little bit to move up and secure somebody special? And sure enough, the Patriots need weapons, especially at tight end, but they would happily take a wide receiver. But Kyle Pitts is a legit top 10 option. He is a fantastic elite prospect. He's he's. It, it's, it's stupid what he's doing in college football right now. The Patriots need him. The Patriots want him. And so, you know, they're, they're just freaking out right now, sitting at 16. Please don't take him. Please don't take him. Please don't take him. Please don't take him. And so when they get a call from the Vikings saying, hey, did you have any interest in moving up? They're like, yes, let's do it. Now, as far as compensation, the Patriots give up a fourth-round pick as well as a 2022 fifth-round pick. Again, there is precedent for this. This was the um, pick that the – who was it? See, it's, the formatting here is garbage. But there was somebody uh, had to do – the Chargers, I think, moved up to get Melvin Gordon. They moved up two spots. They gave up this exact thing. It was a fourth-round pick and next year's fifth-round pick. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, the Vikings and Patriots are both 
uh, doing seven round mocks this week. Those are already done. The Vikings is very difficult because now we have a huge pile of picks. The Patriots obviously a lot easier, but Kyle Pitts, tight end out of Florida to the Patriots. With the 15th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle, Texas. I, I promise you, I tried as hard as I could to move up and get a quarterback. We had four go in the top five. There's nothing sitting here right now. Um, next best thing, as far as I can see, is offensive tackle. We do have a Bears mock drop in Friday, seven round Bears mock. Um, it's tough, man. One of the, the other things I learned doing these seven round mock drafts, um, there are quarterbacks early on. There are a lot of big hyped up guys, but after that, it's just, it's kind of a barren wasteland. I mean, we got um, obviously Trask and, and Mac Jones, but I mean, it just, if, if you don't hit on these couple guys here and there, there's nothing. And so um, every single week I'm learning more and more. The Bears, if they're going to get a quarterback, if they're even going to try in 2021, you got to get up. you got to move up. You, first of all, stop winning football games. Don't win any more football games, you absolute idiots. Stop doing that. Your only chance... Oh, that's, that's making me think about the whole... Okay, here's a question for Bears fans. Are there any of you right now who are buying into the hype that Mitch Trubisky is killing it right now. He finally figured it out, and we should just sign him and move on. I'm curious. I'm very – because it's been like two weeks in a row. He's, you know, one of the better quarterbacks in football if you just look at the last two weeks. Is that a thing? Because if it is, then we got to tackle. We'll add some wide receiver talent, and let's see what we can do here. But very curious, Bears fans, in the comments section, let me know. But for today, Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle to the Tex uh, – With the 16th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings are back on the clock. Select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. A lot of Vikings fans seem to love this pick. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, I've already mentioned the Vikings offensive line is getting better. Certainly some things we can do defensively as well um, as that begins to age and erode a little bit. Um, but it just it does make a little bit of sense. We need more help, uh, especially at guard. And again, this is a guy that I did not want to lose very close to losing him and so we moved back two spots got an additional pick we got a pick next year and uh, we still got our guy Wyatt Davis with the 17th overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Las Vegas Raiders are going to accept a trade from the New York Jets the New York Jets are going to give up a third round pick I know that doesn't sound like much trade chart says it's already overpaying also if you look at it the Broncos moved from 24 to 17 and gave up a third round pick so getting the first pick in the third round is kind of a gift we're going to accept that with the 17th overall pick the Jets select Jalen Waddle wide receiver Alabama so from the Raiders perspective it really just came down to the 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 guys that we want um, and I'm primarily looking and I it, it, Raiders are tough. There's a lot of different directions depending on how you feel about certain guys. I'm looking at defense, and I want to try to build that up a little bit. And I feel like the back of the first has a lot of better options for us. So let's get some additional compensation, especially since we have a lot of pieces that we need. We can get some talent in the third round. We got an additional pick. We get into more comfortable territory at the back of the first. We're going to accept this trade from the Jets' standpoint. We got our quarterback. Now we're going to go up, similar to the Miami Dolphins, you know, getting their, their top-tier wide receiver the next year after getting Tua. Um, we're just going to start stacking talent, man. We, we, we're going to really make a charge at this. I've been saying for a while, I think the Jets, if they can get good leadership, they're in a position they can actually do some stuff. And when you got the right quarterback, now you get a guy like Jalen Waddle. We're really starting to make strides. I, we're, we're, me and Jets fans are at odds on the offensive line. You guys love Fant. I do not like Fant, but whatever. Makai Becton's a freak. We got some potential there. If things don't work out, you still got free agency. We've got several rounds still in the draft to get some stuff figured out. But this is a fantastic start to get the number one quarterback, one of the better quarterbacks to come out in a while, and then follow that up with Jalen Waddle at pick 17. To get both of those guys is fantastic. So Jalen Waddle to the Jets at 17. With the 18th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select 
Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. I feel like this happened last week, too, or, or recently, where we just missed out on a high-end wide receiver. Somebody traded up, and, and for good reason. That's the other thing for the Jets pick. They want to move up one spot and uh, overtake the Ravens, who are probably going to be looking at one of these top-tier wide receivers that are sitting here. That is the case. Now, that's not to say we have to go wide receiver. I like wide receiver to the Ravens. There are other options, but the thing is, Again, there's so many wide receivers, and they do tend to fall a little bit because there's so many of them, and there's going to be wide receivers later on. Um, it doesn't feel as urgent. So usually the best guy on the board when the Ravens are picking is a really good wide receiver. So it's probably a safe bet to say that that, that may be what the Ravens do. But again, comment section. Let me know what you think. What are some other options? What, what would you do in this situation if wide receiver was the best available? Do you uh, reach for something else? Are we trading? What, what are you looking to do? So let me know. But for now, Rashad Bateman, wide receiver to the Ravens. With the 19th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington football team selects Travis Etienne, running back, Clemson. So this is, I'm going a different route here, and this is another kind of experimental pick, and I want to see how people react. People hate taking running backs early, and I get all that. Um, and I went back and forth on this as far as what we should do. We, we could have reached at position like tackle, could have massively reached at position like quarterback based on the, the board and where it currently sits. But... Um, the top of the board is a running back and this guy always falls and in fact I've, I've had it fall so far that he ends up making it into the second round which is ridiculous considering he's a top 15 player on my board every single week so we're sitting at 19 he's the best available player we desperately need a running back it's a little bit of a luxury pick for a team that needs so many things so I, I, I don't know if this is the best pick but again I want to gauge the room. I want to feel where we're at. What do people think about ETN? What do Washington fans think about getting a running back? Should we wait until later? Which, of course, you can. But what if later doesn't give you Travis ETN at a great value? Um, again, it, it's, it's probably a pick that I won't make again. But I want to gauge the room a little bit and see where we're at on this. So Travis ETN to Washington. With the 20th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. Where I'm sitting, this is this is a must pick. Maybe it doesn't have to be first round, but you've got Peterson, Joseph, and Kirkpatrick that are all right now free agents, as in when this draft takes place. And you've also got Alfred, who is in the final year of his contract. We just don't even have bodies right now at cornerback. So not only do we want you know young elite talent at corner, every team wants that. You, you got to have that. We don't even have football players to field the team right now, depending on if we pay any of these guys or whatever. But we got to start swinging at this. We're taking a corner here. And, and if this was a full seven round mock, which it isn't for the Cardinals this week, maybe next week, I'm not sure. Um, we're probably taking several swings at cornerback to, to just get more bodies in here. It might be a later round pick, but I would probably at least have like a fifth round corner or something to that effect. So J.C. Horn to the Cardinals. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Jeremiah owosu Karamoa, linebacker, Notre Dame. One of the things that, and, and this happens at several positions, and I, I think there's a general fan and media narrative, and then there's just the reality that I'm staring at. Um, and the, the general narrative, apparently, for Dolphins fans is that you guys have very good linebackers. Um, Jerome Baker, in particular, seems to be very popular. He is currently ranked... 61st out of 86 linebackers via PFF. That's an improvement over last year when he was 76th out of 90th. Um, but in it, even if we like our linebackers, three of our six linebackers are currently free agents. And I'm just, I'm not paying these guys. I'm sorry, I'm just not. I mean, we'll see what happens and what the Dolphins want to do. If it's me and if it's my money, um, again, just looking at PFF rankings, this is the worst linebacker group in football. There might be a couple that are worse, I mean, there, there's a big discrepancy between what fans think and what, what I'm looking at. Um, I don't see any stats that necessarily show that these guys are top tier. I don't see anything. Um, again, if you want to point me in a certain direction as in terms of why you think that they're very, very good, that would be fine, and I'd be happy to check that out. But um, as of right now, Jeremiah Owosu Karamoa is beyond a no-brainer for me. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will accept a trade from the Pittsburgh Steelers, who will come up from 30 to 22. And with the 22nd overall pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. Um, the only real reservation I have with this, and, and again, 
the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wanted to move back quite a bit because of, of who's at the back and it's just being better fits and all that. The only team I could see that made a lot of sense to move up was the Steelers be, and, and getting this tackle. The, the, the biggest issue, though, is there's a lot of tackles available. But my general thought process is we're drafting a player, not a position, right? In mock drafts, it'd be easy to get away with whatever. We still got the – I could check the box of tackle. But Alex Leatherwood and Christian Derrissaw are not the same guy. Um, and so in this case, we're saying the Steelers really like Leatherwood. They've got an opportunity to go up and get him. At one point, Leatherwood was – a top end prospect he does seem to be falling down the board in terms of why we're doing this the offensive line is just not really putting out what we want and then on top of that Villanueva who's a great player he's really getting up in age Okafor is a subpar tackle it's not good enough and at this point we're starting to really be concerned about the offense right this is a team that had Super Bowl aspirations top to bottom right this was the year this was finally going to happen and as we're all sitting here right now we're looking at the Steelers going I just don't know if this offense is going to be able to get over the hump so um, if that is the case if it is the case that the Steelers do not win a Super Bowl because the offense just completely fell off we got to start building this thing up quickly because as we've seen with several teams you know the Jaguars the Bears whatever they've got these top end uh, defenses that are ready to go. They're ready to, to, to hoist that trophy, and the offenses are just falling flat at the wrong time. So we got to turn this around. We got to do it quickly. Alex Leatherwood to the Steelers. I think I forgot to mention the trade compensation here for the Steelers. Um, the Steelers are going to give, on, in addition to pick 30, pick 94, which is a third round pick, and pick 108, which is a sixth round pick. The precedent for this is the 2001 trade between the New York Giants and the Indianapolis Colts. If you're curious, go check that out. That's what I did, but that's the compensation. There you go. With the 23rd overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Kyle Trask, quarterback, Florida. It's pretty rare to uh, not have to trade up for a first-round quarterback. I feel like that's been what we've needed to do for about the last, what, three or four years. Every first-round quarterback, there's been a trade-up. But, um, you know, at this particular point in time, I mean, it's still it's a bit of a reach, which is probably part of the issue here. But, again, you get past Trask and Jones, and there's just no option. So we're sitting here as the Colts. You know, we've got Rivers. Um, I don't know exactly how to play this out, and I don't, I don't know exactly what a lot of Colts fans think. Again, get in the comment section. My thought is let's give Rivers a contract. Let's give him a one-year deal. Let's have Rivers play. Let's have Kyle Trask sit. If he can take the job in 2021, great. If not, we'll have Trask take over in 2022. But that, that's kind of where I'm at with this. Let's let's give Rivers a one-year deal. Let him coach up Kyle Trask a little bit, and um, then we'll have, let him take over in 2022. Otherwise, I'm not really sure what we do here because um, we need a quarterback, right? And the only other option is to just flat-out pay Rivers, um, and I, I don't know that we want to do that long-term. So Kyle Trask to the Colts at 23. With the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Carlos Boogie Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forest. I just figured out that was his nickname. Super jacked about that. That's an awesome nickname. Um, look, Miles Garrett is one of the best in the game, but outside of that, I'm not in love with your defensive line as a whole. Olivier Vernon, good player for a while. Um, seems like age has kind of caught up with him. He is a free agent. I'm not willing to pay him, so Basham's going to come in. He's going to take Olivier Vernon's spot. And we're just going to keep rolling. We're just going to keep – I can't believe how good you guys are doing. But, I mean, this is just going to keep us at that level, and we're going to keep cooking. So, Carlos Basham to the Browns at 24. With the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Joseph Asai, edge rusher, Texas. So, um, again, they had accepted a trade moving back from 17 because there were not a lot of defensive players. As you can see, Jeremiah Owosu-Karamoa and Carlos Basham are the only two defensive players to go in that entire stretch. Uh, we would have happily taken Basham, but as we get toward the back, what I'm really looking for is edge rushers, defensive tackles. Get that defensive line looking a little bit better. we got to get better off the edge in particular. So with Joseph Asai sitting there, we're happy with it. We picked up our additional third-round pick. We're going to keep stacking talent. And um, I'm feeling good about uh, Asai at uh, pick 25. With the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. I mean, it, it for all these these teams getting quarterbacks in the first round, especially the ones that have additional picks, it's just about help him succeed. 
right? If it's a wide receiver, it's if, it's a if it's a tight end, offensive line, running back, whatever it is that's going to help this offense take a little bit of weight off of a rookie quarterback, that's what we're going to do. And, and we're going to look at, at building up a great offensive line here. I think he has weapons at wide receiver right now. Um, and we're just going to keep building, right? So he's got, he's got some weapons. We're going to help the offensive line. At some point, we're going to end up getting a better running back. And, and we're just... We're going to make sure that this guy succeeds. That's the only priority. Forget the playoffs and everything else. This guy just needs to not be ruined, right? <laughs> let's get this guy in a rhythm. Let's teach him up on the offense. Let's get him some positive press. It's a great start. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Rondale Moore, wide receiver, Purdue. This entirely depends on Corey Davis. The, the biggest reason I'm doing this is because I've been seeing for years that the Titans are going to offload Corey Davis, offload Corey Davis, offload Corey Davis. But he has absolutely exploded recently and become the wide receiver that uh, I think Titans fans had hoped that he'd be a long time ago. Um, he's really doing a fantastic job. I don't know where, where he stands, to be honest. I don't know if the plan is to keep him or if you guys are just like, eh, he's okay, but he's you know we can move on. We don't really need him. If that's the case, I like Rondale more. Now, even if you keep him, it doesn't mean you can't pick Rondale Moore. We would just have three elite wide receivers. Rondale is going to be a slot guy, um, and this will be, you know, arguably the best offense in all of football with what you guys have. But again, I don't think I make this pick if we're keeping Corey Davis. Um, if we're going to move Corey Davis, which becomes even more likely when you look at how much you paid a running back, which is kind of an iffy thing to do to begin with, and you've got another wide receiver that's going to want a lot of money. I don't know. So again, comment section, let me know what's going on with Corey Davis because I'm curious. It's a tough spot to be in, but for now, we're going Rondale Moore to the Titans. With the 28th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Creed Humphrey, interior offensive line, Oklahoma. Look, it's, it's, it's a bad spot for the Bills. It just is. I, I really had two options. I could reach for a prospect or I could trade out of the first round. And the only reason, honestly, I didn't trade out of the first round is because I didn't want Bills fans to be waiting this long just to not see a pick, especially since a couple of videos ago, I think I just forgot to put the Bills pick in the video. So I'm going to reach. Um, I would love to have gone defense. I'm just, I'm, I promise you, there's just nothing, man. The, the, the edge rushers just went bash him in a sigh. Maybe there's some guys that you like. I don't know. But on my board, I got nothing for you. So the, the next best thing I could do is get you a little bit of help along the offensive line to try to bolster that and make it even a little bit better. Um, but again, it was a real tough spot to be in. And so Creed Humphrey, let me know what you think in the comments. To the Bills at 28. With the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Nick Bolton, linebacker, Missouri. Um, the run defense for the Packers is terrible. That's that's the bottom line. Uh, you could go defensive tackle, and I think a lot of people would prefer that, especially with Nick Bolton kind of coming on strong recently and, and thinking maybe he could be somewhat of an answer there. Um, but with Kenny Clark getting paid as much as he is, and we have to we have to assume he's going to get better. Um, if, if there's going to be any sanity or, or faith in our team and our GM and our coaches whatsoever, the guy we just paid a ton of money to has got to be better. Um, you got Kingsley Kiki, who's been stepping up and playing a lot better along the defensive line. So we're going to take a swing at linebacker. I know it's an unrealistic thing, but um, it's a little bit of pandering going on. And it also gives you guys an excuse to go watch some Nick Bolton film. Uh, he's a fun guy to watch. I don't know personally if I want him in the first round. I haven't really watched that much. I think I watched one game of his. But um, he's a fun guy to watch, man. He, he's my kind of guy. He's a very physical. He's going to bring you down if he touches you, kind of a linebacker. So we'll try it out. Nick Bolton to the Packers at 29. With the 30th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are back on the clock and they select Christian Barmore, defensive tackle, Alabama. This is exactly why we wanted to move back. Um, there is talent right now on defense and along the defensive line and whatnot, but a lot of guys are leaving. Obviously, Vita Vea is stepping up and has become an absolute monster, which is super exciting. Um, but you got guys like Sue and JPP and McClendon and whatnot that are all leaving. They're all up in age, so I don't know if we're bringing them back. We've got to replenish that a bit. So with the 30th pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Christian Barmore. With the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Mac Jones, quarterback, Alabama. Now, last week, this would have been a reach that I couldn't possibly make. He was at about pick 100 last week. But he has flown up the board to pick 43 recently. I think that is within reach. Um, when you're sitting at pick 31 and you are the Saints, 
Uh, we, we've learned that we don't have a quarterback behind Drew Brees. That's that's what I think we've learned at this particular point in time. So we're going to move ahead with Mac Jones, and we're going to see if he can be the guy. Otherwise, I guess the reign of terror has ended in New Orleans. I don't, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's kind of Drew Brees or bust at this point. With the 32nd pick, the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs select Javon Holland, safety, Oregon. It's always tough to pick for the Chiefs because Chiefs fans obviously are very prideful about their team, and in their opinion, they don't need anything, which is fair. You've got a good offense, you've got a good defense, so it's, it's hard to say you need anything. But let me just throw this at you. Javon Holland is cool because he's a little bit of a puzzle piece. You can play him at safety. He plays strong safety. He plays in the box. He plays in the slot. You can move him around wherever you need him. So I'm kind of just handing him to you and saying whatever you think you need. You want him in the slot. You want him in the box as a third safety. You want him up high at safety. You can do whatever you want with the guy. So that's sort of where I'm at with Javon Holland is, is giving you a Swiss Army knife. And, and you've got some brilliantly intelligent coaches over there that can, that can use puzzle pieces like this to just outthink people, to, to play people at multiple positions, at multiple levels, to just add that layer of complexity to where you don't know what the guy's going to do and he's just going to wreak havoc. So Javon Holland to the Chiefs at 32. That's going to do it, folks. Uh, again, as always, I really appreciate it. Any comments and uh, questions, concerns, whatever, please put them in the comment section. Please like the video. That does help me out quite a bit in terms of the rankings and whatnot. Um, otherwise, please subscribe. Hit the little bell notification because I've got mocks coming out every single day, and you're not going to want to miss your team. Speaking of, please check out that little join button. See if anything there interests you, uh, depending on what level you can get. Uh, we've got the Giants. Uh, Tuesday, 49ers Wednesday, Vikings Thursday, Bears Friday, Patriots Saturday, Raiders Sunday. Again, if you are a member on the, I believe, veteran tier or higher, you're going to be able to watch these videos as soon as they become available. You don't have to wait until those days. So please consider it. Please check it out. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll catch you next time.